Um, I'm here today to talk to you about uh, the worst catastrophe in life, which is kind of frustrating. And uh, there are two things I want to say. First of all, I feel really, really humbled to be speaking here because um, I made a small list of things I don't have which other speakers have. So uh, I don't have the spiritual insights of Gabor. I don't have the futuristic thoughts of Franz. I don't have the minimalistic um, thoughts and ideas of Ewald. Um, I'm not as good looking as uh, Judy May. <laughs> I'm not as clever as Bernd. I'm not as experienced as Istvan. I'm not as happy as Philip. I'm not as spontaneous as uh, Jubin. But I'm younger than all of them. All of you together don't have uh, any chance. <laughs> um, let's return to the worst catastrophe in life. The worst catastrophe in life, in my opinion, is not whether you have a girlfriend or not, or whether you split up with your girlfriend, and it's also not whether you, um, whether your auntie dies or not, and also not whether you have a nice zoo where you can play with your uh, little animals, because that's life. You gain and you lose. The worst catastrophe in life is, in my opinion, whether you pursue the dream you have. And now don't tell me that you don't have a dream because everybody has a dream. So when, uh, so when you really face, when you really look at your life and you look at what you did and what you didn't do, I think um, all which matters is did you empower other people by, with realizing their dreams and did you realize your own dream? And uh, I think every second of our life should be used to do one of both. <laughs> so when uh, Martin Luther King says, um, I have a dream, which he doesn't agree, he just said, I have a dream, uh, then, <laughs> then I'm sorry, but I don't care. I don't care whether you have a dream, I care whether you try to pursue it or not. And in order to pursue your dream, uh, I want to give you a few steps which I think are essential to that. So, um, why do many people fail in realizing their dreams? I think that's a very complicated question, but um, there are a lot of wrong uh, arguments why they do. So, some might think it's because they uh, don't really believe in their dreams, or maybe because they're scared of failing, or maybe because they don't want to be outside. Well, I'm sorry to inform you, but all of those three um, of those three steps are stupid. Because if you really believe in your dream, you're not scared of failing. And as soon as you start realizing your dream, you will notice that you're not an outsider, but you're at the very inside of, uh, of what it means to be human. Being human means ex exchanging ideas through language, through your body, through, through, through life, through living. And uh, therefore, you're not an outsider if you try to realize your dream. And in fact, realizing your dream, I think, only works if you cooperate with other people, and if you socialize. So, unfortunately, you're wrong. What I think is the real uh, problem why people do not um, realize their dreams and do not spend every single day of their life on the very thing they feel um, encouraged on is because they do not know the necessary steps, or because they're not um, sure enough about the steps which are necessary. So, um, empowering dreams is um, can be very easy, I think, if you if you do not if you are not scared of the information overload, which is there, which Judy May spoke about. But it's much more than only fulfilling yourself. Empowering dreams is what, what is in fact the only thing which can empower society and which will empower future. I think uh, two weeks or so, the, we turned seven billion people on this planet. But we still only have the resources which we had um, before, when we were 6 billion or 5 billion people. And even at that time, we were not able to feed everybody. So we are, we have, we are given resources and we are given um, people. And we have to try to make the best for every... We have to give everybody the possibility to make the best out of that. And we cannot, we cannot, create, we cannot have an uh, unlimited amount of resources but we can have an unlimited amount of people, and therefore the only way to solve this problem is by empowering our dreams. 
And uh, when we were talking about the future, I also want to uh, tell you something very quickly about uh, what I call the I3. It's um, the industrial age, the information age, and the ideas age. So, like 50 years ago, I believe there was the industrial age where um, the person with the biggest factory and with the lowest production cost was the one who succeeded. Afterwards, the information age followed, which um, was the age where basically the person with the most, with the most cutting edge information was the one who won the game. And uh, now I think the next age we're entering is the age of ideas and the age of dreams. There is, there is, uh, there is no thing which is as powerful as an idea if it's really implemented in the heart and the brain of a person. And as we're entering this age, it's really, it's even more important to realize your personal uh, dream and help others empowering their dreams. What's also interesting about the I3 is that um, every age kind of prepared the next age. So when you look at the industrial age, it made uh, production costs for everything very low. And uh, what you needed in the information age was the computer, but the computer could only succeed because everybody was able to afford it. And uh, therefore, the industrial age prepared the information age. And now that everybody has a computer, the most essential thing which is happening is uh, sharing ideas. And that's mainly working through the most important tool at the moment, and that's the internet. And, that, and the internet basically only works because everybody of us has a computer or a smartphone. So that's also something very interesting to consider. But um, what's then really the essential thing if you want to uh, get into the ideas age? I think it's, uh, it's the H3, which is the next thing to the I3. And um, what it basically means is from the head to the heart, from the heart to the hand. If you try to, re where do ideas come into our brain? They come, where do ideas come from? They come from our brain. They come from input and, the, and you have some output, which is an idea or a dream. And then for realizing it, of course, you have to use your hand. It doesn't matter if you use the keyboard or if you're trying to build a house, you always need your hand. But the very big mistake which a lot of people make is trying to go from the head to the hand directly. This, unfortunately, doesn't work. You have to go from the head to the heart and from your heart to your hand. Because it's like when you have an airplane and you're on the, on the, on the way to take off, but you don't have any fuel. You can't take off with an airplane if you don't have any fuel. And so for really making your dream take off, it has to be in the deepest, the very, very deepest point of your heart. That's what I believe. And this kind of fuel which your heart gives you is also um, very essential to, uh, to, when, to the time in flight when turbulences are very, very um, surely going to come and you have to get over them and still keep on going. Unfortunately, it's all not that easy because there is something more important than your heart. It's the attitude in your heart. Mm -hmm. I actually feel quite, quite humble because Philips did a way better talk on that before. Um, but the attitude is really what, what, um, what, what essentially gives your dream the power to become a reality. And I think there are three essential steps in your, in your personal attitude. And that's first of all realizing that the power lies within you. The power to realize your dream lies within you. Namely, sharing your idea with others and uh, planning it and taking it to the next step. Second of all, it's believing that your glass is half full and not half empty because that's earlier or later going to decide whether your glass gets fulfilled or whether your glass gets emptied. And the third step is to um, believe not only in, the, in your dream itself, but also in the power of your dream. Because the interesting thing about dreams is everybody understands a dream quite quickly. Even the most cutting edge and most newest dreams uh, and are very, very, very quickly understood by other people if, if you communicate them the right way. But the power of your dream is much more uh, complicated and much more, um, much stronger than the dream itself. And so, for really getting other people fascinated for your dream, you have to, you have to be able to communicate the power of your dream. See. <laughs> Um, and then the next step is, of course, finding your dream. And therefore, I think asking the right questions is the most important thing. I call them the creative questions because they um, give your brain the because they bring your brain onto the onto the rollway. So before you take off, of course, you have to get onto the rollway. 
And so stop asking why, but why not? Why not should we change um, education? Why not should we change the education system instead of why should we change the education system? You're always going to find more reasons to uh, do something than to not do it. And uh, in order to get those answers, you have to ask exactly the opposite way. So why not instead of why? That's much more fast forwarding the whole process of thinking and being creative. And then the second question is not asking what, but what if. What if the education system uh, brought, uh, personal God brought the attitude of happiness to every single student? What if the education system taught every student exactly the things he needs in order to realize his dreams? Instead of asking, oh, what is the education system teaching at the moment and uh, why is it teaching that stuff? It's much more effective to ask such questions. And then the third question, which is the most important question in my opinion, is how? How do you realize the creative output which came out of your brain after, after, after asking the first two questions? That's, that's, uh, those are three questions which really helped me finding my personal uh, dreams and um, visions for my life and for my daily life also. So I wanted to share them with you. And then uh, finally when you've got your idea, I think the most important thing is to develop them. If you don't develop your idea, it's uh, going to be lost in, in the past very quickly because time moves amazingly fast and developing uh, the thoughts and, and ideas which are in your head is finally what makes a dream a dream. That it's, at the, that it's so far in the future that you have enough time from, from the now to the very future where it's going to be a reality to make it a reality. After developing your dream, there is um, there's the thing which there's the thing which I call planning. So um, it's actually not only planning; it's also preparing, because um, Randy Parshman said, uh, "Luck is preparation plus opportunity," and therefore you don't know the moment where or when people are going to ask you. So what's your dream? For example, I think Harold met at least 50 people, or the ha half of the people who are sitting in this room, and uh, and disrupted them with the question. What's your dream? And so you don't know when you're going to be asked this question. But if you've planned and prepared your dream and, your, and for this very moment where you're being asked this question, then you can show that you can realize it and how hard you, and how hard you have worked for it. Luck is not something which comes out of a box which you've never seen before, but it comes out of the box which you've seen very long, but never know when it's gonna when it, when it's gonna open. You just know that something very, very important is gonna be in there. And I think no dream can be realized without luck. So let's face it, we're responsible for our own luck, at least a very small bit. After that, I think before you can start acting, only, there's only one important thing to remember, and that's pay attention paying attention to the small things. If you really pay attention to the to the small small things which could mess up uh, your time acting on your dream, you cannot really fail anymore. Because if for, because if you have enough planning and enough uh, attention paid to your small problems and your and the very small things which could mess up everything, you can you can really concentrate on doing them so well that they won't even go wrong. So um, it's also it's actually only a uh, uh, smaller step of, of, uh, of, of planning and preparing, paying attention to the small steps. And uh, after that, it's really not hard anymore, because what follows afterwards is acting. Just do it. It's really not so hard. If you've, if you've thought about it, and if you feel in your heart that this is the dream which you want to bring to reality, there is nothing more to think about, there is nothing more to be scared about. It's about acting. If you act, uh, the right people are going to come, the right thoughts are going are to come, and um, you really shouldn't be scared anymore. Start uh, starting to act is way harder than than we sometimes than we sometimes think because we're always scared of because we sometimes are scared of failing. But do be never scared of acting if the dream which you have really lies in your heart. I think uh, this is one of the most essential things I've learned in the 16 years I've had on this planet. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, and afterwards, then, then you've done it. You've acted, and uh, after some more turbulences or some less turbulences, your 
dream is finally going to work out and the future is going to be empowered. And that's what we should all be worried about. Empowering our future by doing, by acting in now, by acting in, in the very moment we have at the moment. And uh, empowering future is not very hard. It's just empowering your dream. And it works also through empowering youth and empowering society. And everybody, if you can help doing that by just empowering your personal dream and being more fulfilled in your daily lives, being happy. Thanks. Thank you.